Well, hello. And this is what we at Pixel Federation, the Slovak's largest game developer, with more than 300 people have been doing for the last 16 years. But first, let me introduce myself. I'm Martin Kolsun, I'm a 3D tech artist, currently at AI department, and been in a Blender since version of 258, because please, that's, that's how you measure time now, in Blender versions. As an R&D member, I participated in almost all live projects we have, and during this time, I can guarantee you the things I've seen. <coughs> And, um, but first, let me ask a question. How many of you guys work in game development? Please hey, raise your hands up. Perfect. And how many of you use Blender as your main tool in your pipeline? OK, and please keep your hands up, those of you who use also another 3D tool. OK, so you guys, you guys exactly know where I'm coming from. And for the rest of our audience, we are more than happy to share you the story of making, breaking, and sharing. The story of bringing Blunder to more than 70 artists of Pixel. It all started back in 2022 when we wanted to expand our business by opening a studio in Czech Republic. This allowed us to explore new collaborations, finding new talents, and go presence internationally. However, the studio itself faced a more significant challenge when tasked with taking over the whole production of the project itself. The project I'm talking about started as a simple reskin of our successful and famous game Train Station 2, which started back in 2011. The game I'm going to talk about is the Port City game. And this game took all, it took, all every, it took everything. It took all technology, know-how, mechanics with it, and one simple thing, asset pipeline based on a different DCC. So we were in a situation where we have this business opportunity, an opportunity to help on the train with industry, pun intended. And in order to overcome this, we needed a well-motivated team, talented athlete, and skillful technician. And let's move our focus now to view the story from the different perspective. And I'm more than glad to pass the floor to Carolina which is our talented 3D athlete of the Port City project. Hello, everyone. So let's see how we actually made our pipeline a Blender pipeline. And let's look at it from a perspective of a beginner. Blender is an obvious choice for beginners, especially nowadays. I'd argue it's the best software for beginners to get actually into 3D. But when you hone your skills, you create a great portfolio, and then you're ready to find a job in the gaming industry. And all you find in the job listings is this. There's something missing, right? <laughs> so OK, let's see. And per perhaps it's best to wait for an opportunity, because all of these tools are a pretty big investment, especially for beginners with no experience. So let's wait for an opportunity. And you will learn that indies appreciate us a lot. If you have an opportunity to work with indies, even if that doesn't necessarily result in a ship title, it's a very valuable experience. And more and more in recent years, we finally have an opportunity to see something like this. It's there, yay. <laughs> Maybe not at the forefront, it's still an additional skill, but it's there, uh, or more of a footnote. And uh, Blender being a footnote actually started our journey at uh, Pixel Federation. We knew in, uh, when we started that uh, the, Mac, the pipeline was built on Max, but the rest of the future was quite uncertain because uh, we were about to become a standalone production team in the following years, so the things were in our hands. Uh, the pipeline was already established. We worked uh, between Max and uh, Unity, and all of the tools the, were non-existent in Blender. So we were the ones who had to adapt. Uh, if, if we needed some tools, we would simply have to make them or find ways to uh, adjust the tools so they somehow work in Blender, uh, <laughs> which uh, uh, took us a while. But bit by bit, we have managed to slowly convert our, our pipeline. 
uh, personally, I would often feel uh, as an outlier. Uh, after all, when you work in a team, you want to share your work files. And if we all shared our work files in Max, everyone would be happy. If I just followed the standard and learned everything that, the, the thing that everyone used, we would all be happy. <laughs> But if you are here, you know the value of Blender. You've probably tried different softwares before. And if you are here, I assume you still prefer Blender over the rest. And so will we. Uh, with time, our pixel branch in Czechia transitions to a fully Blender-focused pipeline. We took what worked, and I hope we made it even better. It's great if you don't have to start your pipeline from zero, and you can uh, start from something at the very least. Uh, the inspiration part is great. However, do be careful and question everything. Do not adopt mistakes already made. Question why things are the way they are and if they still make sense for you, which is e easier said than done because rarely you have a, have a option to start from a clean slate. You often have to adapt to what is already working in the pipeline. The transition, the, the transition can hard, <laughs> the transition has mostly been done in baby steps. Uh, ideally, you want to imagine your idea pipeline, then take the pipeline you already have and create some kind of road plan uh, how to get to the uh, desired results. As you can see, it just takes time. And you will need allies. You can be a great tech artist and come up with the most amazing time-saving solutions, but if you are the only one willing and capable of using them, you will become discouraged. You need an opportunity and a willing environment to try new things and be willing to work with Blender. So let's say you have a team and an opportunity. What next? Let's hear our tech artist, Patrick. Thank you. So hi, everyone. Thanks for being here. It's a great pleasure. Uh, let's start with a simple question. Why Blender? Well, for me personally, I think Blender is the software for 21st century. And we can talk about all the nice things that we all love. We are all, he all here because of Blender. But maybe I can just summarize it that uh, it just works. I mean, it boots up instantly. There are almost no crashes. You can have multiple instances of Blender running. And you can control C and control V from one to another. And honestly, this feels like being light years ahead compared to different software packages, which is kind of sad because I think this should be a standard, right? So yeah, it just works, but well, until it doesn't, and uh, stuff changes between long-term support subversions, and then your tools break, and you're like, nah, OK. But at least when you report bugs, they get actually fixed. At least that was our experience. And it's really nice to see that developers actually care about you. So, And of course, there's another reason to love Blender, and it's the community, right? That's the reason why we're all here today. So please give yourself a round of applause. So yeah, we all love Blender, uh, and there's one big another reason, and it's nodes. Yeah, of course, you may have heard about them already. They're everywhere nowadays, and yeah, nodes are just awesome. They're non-destructive. They're fast to iterate. Uh, they're a huge time saver if you use them correctly, and there's no prior coding experience needed. Although maybe you might use some when you want to try the more complex stuff, but Overall, they are very artist-friendly, and everyone can start poking around with them. Uh, so, and of course, if you can't navigate the spaghetti yourself, just talk to your fellow technical artists. You know, we always love the opportunity to flex our skills, so just don't be afraid and talk to us. We're actually nice people sometimes. <laughs> and uh, here are some of the tools that we've made in Notes, those pr procedural tools, and some are pretty easy, some are maybe more complex, but what I want to say here is that it's important to focus on the stuff that is being uh, reused. So we uh, were trying to make the assets that are uh, constantly being reused in our game. And the art direction is already established for this asset. So uh, there's uh, very little creative work left for the artists, artists. So why don't we give them just uh, a speed up and they can focus on the creative stuff? So that's what we did. And uh, this is something you often uh, come to these days, like, OK, Blender is nice, everyone likes it. You, you want to use it, but uh, your whole, whole pipeline depends on a different software package. And uh, for that, here are five tips from me to get you started building your custom tools. 
the first one is don't be afraid and just dive in. Just try it. What can you lose? It's just uh, try if it works for you. And it's, that's what I thought. It's just a couple of scripts put together, like how hard it can be, actually. And it turns out it's not that easy either. But still, just go for it. Try it. It's, there's nothing to be afraid of. Uh, and the Blender API is well documented. Well, that is true if you're a Python programmer. Otherwise, it's a bit of a nonsense. And uh, it actually doesn't make any sense. For non-tech people, it's really hard. So the on onboarding could be made a little bit easier. But still, it, it's there. And of course, just start experimenting. You know, there's a lot of ways to, to start experimenting. And there's always the Blender scripting, scripting tab in the default Blender installation with the Python Interactive Console and all the examples. You can dig in and try for yourself. Nowadays, there are also add-ons to make add-ons, which is awesome, or add-ons to make different macros. So uh, you can try if that is the way that, uh, that can help you build your custom tools. And of course, you can chat with your favorite AI if you don't mind uh, arguing about hallucinated classes or mistaking uh, Blender API versions. If that's for you, just go for it. But at least you will get pretty good at debugging. So yeah, just go for it. It teaches you something. And if none of that works, well, just find someone who can do it for you. And at this point, I would like to say hello to Samo, who made uh, most of our tools possible. Uh, he's a magician coder, uh, and he made it just some, from some of my notes and uh, half-baked half solutions. And I would like to say at this point that he's a student working with us part-time, and he made all of the tools during his summer break, which is just awesome. And I have no idea how he did it. And it just shows that uh, if you find the right person to do the task, everything is possible. Uh, and after you're done and you have your tools, maybe the hardest part may uh, start because you have to actually test them in the production. And you have to call it collect feedback from the artists. You have to report various bugs that might come up. And of course, you have to iterate on the ideas that you had and you think that someone, something is going to work, but it turns out it's not working as you intended. And in the end, make your team happy. So what were the problems that we need to solve? Uh, except the uh, existing things that we, need, that we had, and we just translated it one to one, uh, we also needed uh, in Blender and missed in Blender direct access to vertex attributes, mainly the vertex color attribute. And we wanted to work on it per vertex in edit mode. Because uh, you know painting mode is great, but it's good for, well, painting and not so much for precise editing of low poly models. So we also needed a way to preview and edit alpha channel, because uh, uh, our shaders and a lot of VFX rely on alpha channel, on data in alpha channel, or uh, in different uh, attributes like UVs and stuff. So we also needed some pipeline specific uh, automation. Uh, this is one of the tools we've made. It's called Vertex Artist. Uh, sadly, there's no link or fancy QR, but if you search for it, you're going to find it the, on Blender Market and also on GitHub. So please support the author. And it gives us direct access to the Vertex attribute in edit mode, which is great, because that's the place where most of our artists spend the, most of the time. And we can assign colors to the vertices. We can assign colors to faces. We can work with color palettes. We can preview the alpha channel uh, independently from the color channel and then just uh, switch back to the color channel. So it's really awesome. You can see the uh, colors that the object has and edit it. So it's pretty non-destructive also. Uh, another thing, this is just a specific thing to our uh, pipeline. We are baking different data into different channels and attributes, so like uh, alpha channel and UVs and stuff like that. And uh, we just wanted to make the life of our artists easy. And so they can, with just one click, check if the object contains any errors, if there's maybe some redundant attributes or the attributes uh, channels are uh, not correctly named. And if uh, they find some errors, there's a simple log that shows you what's wrong with the asset. And you can, with, with simple clicks, just fix the various, uh, various stages, the mistakes, and check again, and see that your asset is good and ready to get exported. Uh, we've seen the presentation on Thursday where uh, they've used a QA bot, and we're definitely stealing that idea. Uh, it's, it sounds really great. 
So, uh, and this is just a little tool, but it's one of my favorites because it solves a specific problem, and it's that sometimes you have to merge uh, different meshes, and some of them might be rotated, and you apply the rotations, and you, get, you lose the, the actual rotation, and you want to reuse that as asset at, uh, at a different time. And here, with just selecting the three vertices that conform a 90-degree angle, uh, you just press a button, and it gets aligned to the orthogonal place. So it's a simple thing, but it saves a lot of time. And uh, another thing, this is also specific to our pipeline, to, to how we work. And our game designers are, are using sheets a lot for, for their purposes, and we need uh, the data from those sheets in a slightly varied form in Blender and in the end in the Unity to, to work with them. So we have the data, right? Why don't we just use them? So there's a simple solution to download CSV, upload it into Blender with just one click. It gets created, all, all the stuff that we are working with. And uh, I would like to stop here for a minute, and we've all heard the news, and uh, we've seen decisions being made and then unmade. And I, I would like to say that the best thing about building pipeline in Blender is actually that there's no party holding you hostage. And you know, it's, this gives us a huge freedom, and that's all thanks to Blender. So thanks to everyone who made this possible. And now back to Martin. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Patrick. And <clears throat> here we are. And holding a hostage is something that you really don't want to do to your team full of artists. What you exactly want to do is the exact opposite of it. You want to give them a freedom. You, give to them, you want to show them that you care. And what is the best way to spread the fact that you care? To share. I think this is the biggest cliche I could use in the presentation, because sharing is caring. But I ask myself, what is the thing that Blender's community is so special? What's there? And then I just found that they do this. They do this with passion, knowledge, environment they have. And in order to share our artists' knowledge, we need to find their passion, what they are passionate about. Then to show them basics, basics of Blender, and create a system allowing us to find those willing to share. And that's exactly what we did. We just asked them. We just asked them about their interests. We asked them about modeling, animation, geonodes, scripting, coding, stuff. Then we evaluated the data, created syllabs, found a teacher who is also the founder of Blender Slovakia, Josef Zayat, and taught them. And you may ask, this is it? Well. No, of course it's not, but the, this well-guided introduction and our open eyes led us to those willing to share. And now, out of 70 artists, we have already 20 plus artists, production ready with Blender as their main tool if they, in their pipeline. And each day, we have more and more opening lectures of those willing to share. And Everyone's different and also this, their environment. So this is actually the thing you really want to share also. Mm, even in a situation when you have almost 100 add-ons, directories, paths, different tools, etc. And what we did is exactly the same. We find a solution, found a guy, make it happen. With this tool, we are able to share add-on lists, tools, library paths, asset, or libraries, etc. Just uh, you have to select the correct tab, browse via the list, uh, open file folder or read documentation or install add-on directly. Keep it simple. And now mm, our story comes to the end. And like from all stories, even from this one, you can take a thing or two. And we already did it for you. So to wrap it up, we have three points: be comfortable being an outlier, and there's a super high probability that the problem you have, somebody have, <coughs> sorry, somebody have already solved the problem you have. So just keep your eyes open and look everywhere. And rely on people and let them share. So, uh, and if you're in a situation that none of the above apply, just, well, this is a whole different story. And uh, now I would like to thank all of you and 
So if you have a question, just feel free and stand by. Thank you.